Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. This is a continuation lecture on sanity checks related to the floor plan, which must be performed to ensure the smooth execution of your steps related to physical design. So without any delay, let us get started. In previous lecture, we broadly covered what sanity checks are. So there were netlist related checks, there were SDC related checks and linking related checks and netlist versus SDC. We had covered why we should be doing the sanity checks, why it is important. And we also covered in detail what netlist related checks are. So uh, out of those netlist related checks, there were first was output should not output should be should not be tied to the ground so output should not be tied to the ground that was the first check that we saw in the netlist related checks and then second check that we saw was input should not be floating so there should not be any floating input no floating inputs in the design are allowed. We have seen that in detail why it is important. Then we also saw that there should not be any multi-driven nets. So there should not be any multi-driven nets in the design that also we covered in detail. Then last we saw was there should not be any combinational feedback loops. So there should not be any combinational feedback loops or you can say that no timing loops should be present in the design. This combinational feedback loop creates a problem in the ST also and hence it should be avoided. So we have seen all this and now we will cover in detail what are SDC related checks. Let us assume this is our design and there are certain ports at the bottom. These are your interface ports and hence in our SDC related checks first expectation is your IO delay must be properly defined. If your IO delays are not properly defined, then the interface timing will not be correct. We have covered the contents of SDC in one of the previous videos. You can go and watch that video. So in that input delay and output delay are specified using set underscore input underscore delay. This is for input related and command for output is set underscore output underscore delay we have covered that in detail how do we specify all the constraints so first expectation is your io delays should be proper for the proper interface timing the second sdc related check is there should not be any unconstrained endpoints so if you have any unconstrained endpoints that means you have a timing path but it is not constrained if the constraints are missing that means your sdc is not correct so unconstrained endpoints should be zero we will not be able to perform timing analysis and optimize properly if you have unconstrained endpoints in the design the third check is related to the flip-flop clock pins so if let us say this is your flip-flop and this is your clock pin so there should be a clock should be reaching to that clock pin so we have to check for that that no if there is no clock reaching to that clock pin then timing optimization will not be correct so no clock reaching to the flip-flop clock pin if that is the case then timing optimization will not be correct and setup and hold checks will not be performed on this particular data pin of this flip-flop so that is not a correct expectation and hence that could happen probably because there is no clock attribute set on this particular clock pin or even if it is set it might be propagate not propagated properly or there could be some other constraint missing on the clock pin so because of this that could happen so we need to check for this also sometimes what happens is let us say that this macro is a macro and its pin is this pin here and this pin is getting clock from this clock source which is giving the clock as clk a and there is also clock coming from the different clock source which is clk b so what happens is you are getting multiple clocks on a single clock pin it could be either macro or it could be on a standard cell also so both we have to check for standard cell and macro all the clock pins there should not be multiple clocks driving a single clock pin so it is similar to 
no multi driven nets we have seen that in earlier case of sanity checks so no multi driven nets should be there it is specifically for clock nets so no multi driven clock nets there is an ex exception that if you have multi source cts which is a specific cts that we will discuss later on in that case you can have multi driven nets but that is an exception and a special case we have seen in previous videos that cell delay is a function of input transition and output load we have seen that already and this transition is of input pin and output load is on output pin so for, for defining every cell delay it is important and while defining for a port also it is needed so if you do not have any input transition defined for a particular port that is also a problem hence while defining a port also so let us say that this is one port this port is connected to some cell inside and then let's say this is an input port so the connection will be like this inside now we need to define something which is connecting outside otherwise this delay will not be properly modeled and hence we should define something like set input transition so let us say that for all transitions for all the ports if you want to define as together so you can define like this set input underscore transition so set input transition is the command that you can use to define some transition let's say 200 ps and if you have the values in ns and inside this you will give all the input ports so that will be all underscore inputs that way you can define so set underscore input transition is the command to use use to define the input transition of the all input ports similarly for defining proper constraints for the output ports we must have a defined load on the output ports if you do not have defined then you can define like this set underscore load and let's say some 25 picofarad you want to define the load as capacitance and here you will give all underscore outputs so this is the command you can use to define the load on the output ports so the requirement becomes that you should have input transition and output load defined on all inputs and output ports on all input and output ports this is a requirement to be defined in the sdc that is all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos please do like share and subscribe to the channel thank you